Hotter than expected retail sales data is also pushing Treasury yields higher today with the 10 year back to its highest since those early October highs. Joining us now to talk about the fallout of that, let's bring in Jason Dreho, UBS head of asset allocation Americas and Michael Farr of Hightower Advisors and a CNBC contributor. Welcome to both of you. Jason, <laughs> asset allocation is usually kind of a ho-hum business, you know, OK, maybe it's 6139, you know, instead of 6040, but not these days. People are coming out with all sorts of, of completely innovative and different ways that they think investors should position for this high rate environment. Where is your head at? Well, there, we definitely have to kind of reassess the way to think about asset allocation. But you know, if you think about the markets this year, we've oscillated uh, you know, a lot with range trading, with equities, with treasuries, and even so the overall market view for soft landing. So I think because things are moving so quickly, if you're really taking a long-term strategy, you don't really want to overreact any of this information, kind of still having that kind of standard core allocation of, of equities, fixed income, and, else, and alternative asset classes is still the right way to go. And then it's looking for sort of dislocations in the market, where do they kind of present opportunities? Sure. So I think you don't really want to overreact to this information. So when, when you hear people who say, you know, the 6040 portfolio is dead, you got to be 25, 25, 25 and include commodities or real assets. Or um, I hear people make the case for getting into private credit now, which is interesting. Or Howard Marks, who says, just go all in on high yield, um, including with the defaults that he foresees. Do you think all of that is over an overreaction then? Well, if we just take the 60-40, you know, what worked so well for, for many years is that, you know, bonds were a fantastic asset class. High returns, low volatility, and they diversified, uh, you know, with equities. They had a negative correlation. In an environment where inflation could stay elevated or you get inflation shocks, that kind of negative correlation may not persist. So really what you need is, you know, other asset classes that can help diversify some of that equity exposure. We like different aspects of alternative asset classes. Because these are long-term allocations, they're also not something you want to be sort of too tactical on saying we like it now versus other times. It's really about sort of building that long-term allocation. But I think as you think about that, the macro environment really is requiring us to think we have to add different things to the portfolio because what worked before probably won't work in this macro environment going forward. Michael, if I had asked you a year, 16 months ago, uh, the following question. If interest rates on the 10-year uh, note were at 4.86, pressing 5, would you ever have believed that stocks would be where they are at 4,400 or thereabouts? Oh, no, Tyler, no way. And uh, we would have yet one more example of FAR being wrong over the past 20 some odd <laughs> years uh, on CNBC. Um, uh, I've gotten some things right. You know, I, I think it's an important question because your expectations, right, go to Kelly's previous conversation uh, about asset allocation. Your expectations and where you think things are going to go can't matter. Can't matter. It has to be really. Uh, what your discipline tells you, and there are two guidelines for asset allocation. You can have one for an institution, for a not-for-profit, for instance, and then you have Fred and Ethel, who are in their 60s, and we have to think about them for the long term. So the 60-40, you don't change that asset allocation just because one asset class does well or not. You build that because it's what Fred and Ethel need, or it's what the institution needs, and it's sticking with those disciplines over time because you can be so profoundly wrong about things like this that will protect you over the long term. So let's get to the get to the meat of the matter here. And that, Michael, would be the kinds of stocks, feel free to name names, feel free to name sectors, that you think in the current environment uh, have an edge. OK, I'm going to qualify one more time, Tyler. A uh, short-term edge or long-term edge. If you're looking for a short-term edge, you go with those big seven and you just buy them and pray that the momentum continues. If you're looking as a, as a more uh, disciplined investor, um, a long-term investor, then I think you look at the things that have gotten beaten up, that have really uh, gotten killed, that are down 20 and 30 percent. And I think you what look at these real estate, utilities, what? Well, I wouldn't even go. I don't think you have to go there. Uh, I think, for instance, you can look at a Disney. Uh, you can look at Medtronic. Uh, you can look at any number of different industries, whether it's healthcare. Mm. Some of the look, all the consumer stocks have gotten killed. Um, but I think that there are still value there. You're not going to see the pop, I don't think, by the end of the fourth quarter. But uh, a few years from now, to buy stocks with those kind of balance sheets, 30 and 40 percent off of their highs, I think you're happy there. 